Welcome back to Fast Money, AIG, Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, all beating things like Goldman shares this month, percentage-wise, of course. Is this a sign of a bull market or BS? Gary Kaminsky, <laughs> formerly of Newberger Berman, what's your take? Well, the way I look at it is it kind of reminds me a little bit of a period uh, 1999. And if you remember what happened with the technology names, uh, the, the, when everybody had to own the JDS Uniphase, the Qualcomms, the Nortels, you're running into a situation now where when I talk to guys that are actively managing money, they're basically telling us we have to know these names. You have to participate. It's what I always call closet indexing. And I don't think that's a real good sign. I think when you start to see, and obviously coming out of a recession, the lower quality names are going to perform better. But you're in a relative performance game right now, which I think is very All right, dangerous. Here's the deal. Today, FDIC formalized some of these rules about private equity getting into the system, okay? You think any of these AIG shares or some of this is improving because there's some bridges built? Maybe some of those portions are going to be purchased. Maybe that's why it's being written. And the second thing is, who owns all the shares theoretically of Freddie and Fannie? Mm. The government okay, owns. Wait, just stand. The government, right? Rick, Rick the government Who's owns. Who's going to give me my shorts back? Well, the way I look at it, I, you know better than I do in terms of what's happening with the daily flow. What I know is that active money managers who say that they're active money managers, but at the end of the day, their closet indexes are buying these shares simply because they're participating and they're performing. They're basically doing the same thing they did in 99, which is they felt good having cash March. They felt okay participating in the higher quality names in April and May. And what I think's happened in the last couple of months is let's just jump in because we can't take the chance later this so year Gary, of underperforming. You think they're chasing at the top, but how much longer can they? Ch I mean, how much longer can this go on for? Six months, six weeks, six days? I mean, I'm sort of perplexed here as well. I'm sort of in your camp. Yeah. Well, I think. The time period that I kind of go back to and try to say what was this most like, again, as I mentioned, was 99. And we all know, late 99, many of us sat there and said, we can't believe what's happening, and it carried through into early 2000, and then boom, you know what happened. So as we're in this time period where you're getting close to the end of the year, a lot of these guys that made no money in terms of performance, getting paid for perform performance last year, are going to keep it as much as they can through the end of the year. So September, October, historially bad time periods for the stock market. I think the, un the, the worst businesses hey, are going to outperform, are gonna outperform in the jump short term. In. But I want to be very concerned. I want to be very cautious. I think people that ha have to go back and start thinking about where were we a year ago? Yes, we're going to have, we've made a nice catch up, we've made a nice move, but we've absolutely done nothing well, in terms of most stock prices in a year. But they're still chasing performance because 90% of these guys are still on the sidelines, right? So what sort of an upside when you're talking about dash for trash? Is City, is it too late for people to chase City or Bank of America maybe isn't even a trash, but the movement's already been there. Is it over or are they going to actually earn their way out of this? You know thing? what I got? I, I bought a little City myself oh, good in point. March and I bought a little Bank of America and went on CNBC and I said I did and I kind of tell you, Don't I felt... One billion in I felt by very, the very lucky. I but felt you had low risk for yeah. a huge return, yeah, exactly. and these guys are chasing returns with no returns right we're, now, right? We're, we're owning those names back in March, April was like buying a call option. Sure. To buy those names now and not put in a stop order if you're trading, I think is crazy. The fact is, when this turns, and we know it will turn at some point, and people start to say, we're not, we're not in this strong economic scenario that a lot of people have painted. Rick and I spoke about this uh, last month. You need to be worried about protection, much like if you were worried about protection in August and September of last year, you were okay. Gary, yeah, I, I agree with you great completely. Trade out but there right now, the lines up. Hedge fund communities coming back from the beach, right? They're coming back from the beach. No one believes the rally. September comes. Hedgies are going to fight this thing. They're going to get short in September again. Don't you agree? The hedgies that I know are the same guys that you probably know, and they're all saying the same thing. We're holding on nose. We're participating because we feel we have to. But at the end of the day. The, when, when you looked, I saw in the journal today, you saw that Goldman Sachs analysis in terms of what the hedge funds were all buying. Well, they're all buying the same financials. The same, the same financials. Gary, here's a question. I, Just like 99 with technology. Yep. Question for here, I agree with you completely, but what yeah. will be the catalyst? How will we know? What will be the sign that this dash for trash is over? Sure. Yeah. Well, I think as soon as it becomes apparent to market participants that the economy is not going to grow, is not going to have any real growth in the first quarter of next year. And people start to focus on the fact that with all the stimulus and all this money being printed, it's going to be back to the reality of we're going to be in for a 2010 with very little economic growth. 
and what companies did to achieve profits and to achieve results in 2009 is not going to sustain so it to next year. So are you saying you're convinced there is no growth in 2010? Is that what you're saying right now? I mean, that, that you don't see there's any possibility for growth? As recently as this afternoon, in talking to people that are holding real estate in Arizona, right. what does Wall Street think? There is no recovery. We are starting to see the next leg down. And so while I don't see a tremendous downside in the economy, I don't see, you know, I don't see a, a, a negative five, negative four GDP print. What I do see is no growth because I don't understand how with all the money we've printed and all the stimulus has been pushed into this economy, why we're not seeing more I agree. Bottoming out. Maybe we buy lumber futures. Those trees in that paper have to come from somewhere. <laughs> you have to come back, especially when we see that you're right and the growth isn't there. It's been fun. You're the man. Good to see you guys. Absolutely. And Rick, just real quick on this point, I believe that the money managers, the asset allocation stops when you turn 